Hello, 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 and welcome to the Medical School HQ presentation today, all about uh, pre-health activities and fun stuff like that. Hi, We're going to be hanging out here for the next hour and a half or so, uh, hopefully giving you lots of fun information and answering tons of questions. As you are joining us, I would like you to do two things. Number one, change your chat to everyone from hosts and panelists. And number two, say hello and where you are in uh, this crazy process, typically um, around like when when are you planning on starting med school? So with uh, that, I would love to introduce uh, these lovely two people with me today, Verinia Granum former assistant dean of pre-health and STEM advising at Hofstra University on Long Island. <laughs> How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing great. Thank you. Happy to be here. Um, looking forward to showing some of our wonderful resources for students. Um, I'm excited. Yes, yes. And we also have Rachel Grubbs, co-founder at MAPT, MCAT and pre-med expert for 20 or so years. How are you doing? I'm great. Uh, I just said hi to someone in the chat who I had a consult with about an hour ago. So excited yeah. to see uh, circus family representation. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yes. uh, I love these sessions. I love I loved to give all this information. I love how thoughtful all the questions are. Um, I can already see comments and questions coming in in the chat. And that's my favorite. We're going to leave plenty of time for those. Yeah. Yes. All right. Let's rock and roll. Let me turn on screen share here. So you should see just my deck and not too much else once I slideshow on. All right. So yeah, today's uh, yeah. session is your pre-health journey. Tracking your pre-health journey. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. I oh, think that's sweet. important, right? No. Sure. Just, just go with it. Just go with it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, here we have some lovely faces of the med school advising team. We're so big now that we don't bring everyone to these sessions. So uh, instead of having all seven of us, any one of these workshops, you're going to see two or three of us. So uh, today you've got Ryan and I, the co-founders, and Verinia, particularly I'm excited to have here because you were a dean of pre-health advising. So you've done a lot of work with students in those years leading up to yes. the application. Mm -hmm. um, so this is some technical stuff we researched. It's actual footage of pre-health mm -hmm. students researching the process. <laughs> That's it. That's it's exactly what it's like. <laughs> I've been told gifts aren't cool anymore, and I just don't what? care. No. <laughs> so gifts are true. always cool. Yes. <laughs> I'm just like, I mean, right? This is how you guys feel, right? Just fire hose of information. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what do I need to do? That's it. <laughs> yep, all, all of that. That poor little kid. <laughs> all right, let's dive in. Brittany, I'm going to kick off to you here. Again, I mentioned you've advised thousands of mm -hmm. pre-health students in your career. The first year or two of being pre-health, pre pre-med, pre-PA, pre-whatever health profession, mm -hmm. what matters the most? Absolutely. So app, you want to app start out with a strong foundation, um, figuring out how you learn best so that you can do well in these courses that you're about to embark on. Um, your sciences are no joke, right? What you may have been able to get away with in high school in terms of studying and preparing for things may not work when you're in your first year as a pre-med student in college. You might actually have to go to the library, go to your professor's office hours. So set, setting up that foundation, setting up um, strong study skills so that you can build on that as you move through your um, courses and they become progressively more difficult. Um, so setting that up, connecting with your advisors on campus, academic advising, pre-health advising, all partners in this journey with you, people that you can go to to talk to about, you know, if you're struggling in a class or if you're just not sure where to start in this process, um, connect with them, connect with academic advisors and pre-health advisors. Uh, a part of a lot of what you're doing right now is uh, becoming familiar with the pace of courses, getting to know professors, um, which is great, right? Because you do want to build those relationships early on 
Um, because remember, these are the folks that will know you, they'll know your your qualities as a potential, as a student, as a potential candidate for medical school. And so you're laying the, found, the foundation and laying the groundwork to eventually ask for a recommendation letter. So get to step in, get to studying, <laughs> figuring out your coursework, um, and connecting with the people on campus and the, the partners on campus that can help you on this process. Yes, yes. Um, I, I just want to make a call out. There are uh, some pre-PA people here today. Mm -hmm. Welcome, pre-PA friends. Uh, Verenia, you have a lot of experience yes. advising pre-PA students as well as pre-med. And you will see in some of our slides, some will say pre-med, some will say pre-PA. So, so we are catering to both audiences here today. Yes, indeed. And what's... Um... What's the best part for me of advising any really any pre health student has always been just helping them figure out where they, you know, first figuring out what area of medicine they're interested in or what area of health they're interested in and what are the things that they could do to figure that part out. Um, coursework we just talked about that's foundational stuff that'll vary depending on what area you're going into, but what will not change is. Um, your passion for this right you want to figure that out early on, what is it that you want to do and why. So uh, pre-med prereqs, got a long list here. Mm -hmm. uh, Ryan, you gave some great caveats about prereqs the other day when we were talking about this to some parents. What, what do you have to say about this list? Yeah, that that it's it is not a, a decree or commandments. These are uh, recommendations uh, in general, and every medical school out there has their own list. And so it's one of the more annoying parts of this process is that the answer is always, it depends. So you have to check each medical school that you're potentially applying to, same with PA schools, uh, and look at what each school that you're uh, potentially applying to requires. And if you don't have something, you either figure out how to squeeze it in before matriculating, or you take it off of your list, or you reach out to them and say, hey, is this a hard requirement or can I replace it with something else potentially? Yep, great. And pre-PA list, um, I think one thing you might notice now that I've toggled to the slide is, hey, that's longer. Yeah. Indeed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So um, this is common. It may not be well known among some of among our pre med friends, although I bet a lot of our pre PA friends are already aware. Um, the the PA school pr program uh, is has a very rigorous list of coursework. Also, when we get into talking about clinical or patient care experience, it has more finite and clear demands on what that looks like as well. Um, and this is something that people don't always realize, right? That again these are these this is not a definitive list right you're going to take it with a grain of salt you're going to do your research pa school to pa school there may be other requisites that you need to do just to complete your major or because your school says so um but um pa school is a little shorter in terms of education and training than med school is and that doesn't mean it's easier. It means you're expected to bring more stuff with you to the school. Mm -hmm. So especially if you're someone who a lot of people I think on this call are simply pre-health, they're debating. Am I, do I wanna do ND? Do I wanna do DO? Do I wanna do PA? Do I wanna do NP? Mm -hmm. um, make sure you're taking all the right courses that leave open for those various paths, or at least take the ones that are common, right? Like biology and general chemistry, for example, are common to most of these. You know, start with those so that as you get into your higher years, you can narrow into the courses that you definitely will need later as you make those decisions. Yeah. Lena is asking an interesting question. I'm not sure I fully understand it. As a freshman in college, should you know the colleges you are applying to for medical school? So so should you know the med schools that mm. you're applying to? in order to prepare for the prereqs? So no, you don't generally have to start worrying about that as a first year student, ideally what you're doing is you are taking the basics, right? We all know that the basics are going to be general chemistry, general biology. Those are probably the, the standard prereqs. If a med school will have them, those are gonna be there. 
when you start to be a sophomore and getting into junior year, that's when you should start to just take a couple, uh, t- take a peek and go, are any of the schools that I'm potentially interested in, do they require stats? Do they require some, uh, do they require anatomy and physiology? Um, for, for PA school, anatomy and physiology is more of a standard prereq. For med schools, there are just a handful of med schools that have it as a prereq. And so it's just something you have to take a peek and look. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then um, in the chat, it reads as Maya. I just happened to know it's Fran because I talked to her before. Fran asks, so prereqs don't necessarily mean before the MCAT. It varies. So whether we're talking about MCAT or um, for pre-PA students, most people take the GRE. Some people take the PA CAT, which is science-based. When we're talking about prereqs, it, they're sort of different targets. So sometimes it's, what do I need to be ready for this exam? Um, and so, for example, a common thing that sometimes students miss is it's very, very helpful if you take biochemistry before you prep for the MCAT. Um, no one's going to enforce it. It's up to you, but you're going to have a better experience. Similarly, psychology and sociology are tested on the MCAT, so you may choose to take them, but also you might take other social sciences and just do the psych social prep on your own because that content, I'm not going to say it's easy, but it's comparatively easier oftentimes to memorize. Um, it's largely about reading skills and, and definitions uh, versus you might have in your major a requirement to take anatomy, even though you don't need it on the MCAT and maybe you're not applying to any med schools that you need it, but you might just still need it as part of your major. So, so uh, prerequisites, you're kind of talking about, am I talking about the exam? Am I talking about the, the school I'm applying to? Or am I talking about just required to, to graduate? And you, you have to do the research on all three. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. That's just the way it goes. Oops, went the wrong direction. All right. So we talked about prereqs. Let's dig into activities. Yeah. yeah. Those are important. Right, Vernia? I think so. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, yeah. So once you have a handle on school, you're, you know, connecting with the resources that you need to on campus and you're scoring those A's and B's in those classes, now is a good time to start thinking, okay. This is what I think I want to do. Let me go explore this field. Let me start looking into gaining shadowing experiences, really putting myself in the in a position to be able to see what a doctor or a PA does, um, or even just in general, seeing what healthcare is like. Um, shadowing is usually your first step. You're observing the doctor you're, or the PA, and you're observing to see what they're doing, what their day-to-day is like. That's your first introduction to it. Now you realize, hmm, Maybe this isn't for me or, yeah, I'm excited. I want to keep going. So now you can start looking into more progressively um, responsible experiences or, or where you have more responsibility over patient care, clinical experiences, um, paid or unpaid, volunteer. It's okay. You don't have to um, get paid to do it, although if you do, that's great. It's a salary, uh, but either one is fine for um medical school or PA school. So PA schools are very specific too. They will say we need X amount of hours of patient care experience, whereas medical schools are not as open about, transparent, open about (laughs) what they're looking for, but they want to see that you have explored this field well enough to know what you're getting yourself into and that you understand why you want to do this. So don't try to apply to medical school without at least some shadowing experience. And that's just the very bare minimum. And then for PA school, you absolutely have to have patient care experience. Other things that are going to um, form the foundation of your profile and your your candidacy is, you know, your commitment to service and, and serving others, your community service experiences. You know, you're, you're in healthcare, you're in a field where you're serving others. So you want to be able to experience that. Go out there, help people in different ways um, and, you know, involve yourself in communities that maybe you don't have as much experience with. Get to know what other people are like and and help out in some way. Um, Research, you know, if you're interested in that, that's a great opportunity to really explore the sciences. Not necessarily a requirement unless you're thinking of an MD, PhD program, but a good experience to have if that's something that you would like to do. And then other things like clubs and sports, really, it should be about what you are passionate about. What are you interested in? So when you're thinking of activities, don't just think, well, what's going to look great on my application? Or, you know, what should I do that's going to make me stand out? 
yes, you need some patient care experience, you need some shadowing, but beyond that, find ways to get involved in things that are meaningful to you. Yes, yes. Someone's asking, can we put shadowing, uh, e-shadowing with Dr. Gray on the medical <laughs> application? Yes, that's why Absolutely. we started it. Uh, we have since stopped e-shadowing as of uh, a month now, beginning of this month. But uh, yeah, I actually was talking to a med school uh, representative at a conference. And she's like, your name sounds familiar. <laughs> and then she's like, oh, she put it together. She's like, students have been putting your e-shadowing on applications. Oh, wow. I'm like, yeah, that's that's me. <laughs> awesome. So yes, uh, definitely want in-person shadowing as well at this point. Right. I was just about to say that it just shouldn't be your only shadowing experience. Yeah. Uh, I know it's hard. It's hard to get in-person shadowing, but just you got to try it. You got to you got to do it. Yeah. Uh, I I was just about to put a, a TikTok video out or a, a reel. Um, we just uh, announced at least one person who's going to be doing in-person OMM demonstrations mm -hmm. at MappedCon. Yeah. So if that's something you're interested in seeing, talking to a DO, um, uh, if you're going to apply to DO schools, check out mappedcon.com, which is the conference that we're putting on in October, presented by Blueprint MCAT. Uh, Medical School HQ and the MAPT team are sponsoring as well as the um, the PA platform. So come come hang out with us October 6th through 8th in Baltimore. So excited. Yeah. And I'll even be presenting. I'm presenting on how to gain clinical experiences. Nice. So come Very cool. Check us out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So quick caveat here. For the purposes of simplifying this presentation, we are presenting a four-year pre-health timeline. Uh, I want to make very clear that four years is not the rule and that there's no asterisk or red flag on your application if it's more. This is particularly important for pre-meds because a lot of pre-meds perceive that four is the correct choice. There may still be a little bit of lingering bias out there about that, but not too much because the AAMC's matriculant survey study, so they surveyed med ones last year, asked them, hey, you're starting med school now. So you got in, you're starting. How many years did it take you between graduating college and starting med school? And 47% of them said one or two years. I think it's much more well understood among the pre-PA community because so much clinical experience is required. It's very common for future physician assistants to graduate and then go get a couple years or at least a year of full-time patient care experience before applying to their PA program. Um, but so I'm saying year three here, that might be your junior year. Another way to think of year three is just now I'm at the year where I'm applying to school because the fourth year is actually the year that you're kind of waiting on interviews and actually starting school. So we, you could say year three if you're doing a four-year plan, or it could just be second to last year, the year the application cycle starts for you. Yep, yep. Do you I, want I to continue know. talking about that? I can. I was going to let, yeah. I don't know. I feel like Bernie is the star today. <laughs> <laughs> She's the star every day. Oh, thank it's, you. It's, Sure, I can keep talking. So right. year, so year three, whatever phase you're in, year three is when you're really starting to ramp up your application prep. So going back to what I mentioned earlier, now is when you're going to connect again with those resources. Hopefully, not resources, sorry, your your professors. Hopefully, you've kept up that relationship um, during your first two years of school, um, and now you will approach them and say, hi, I'm applying. It would be great, you know, if you could kindly write me a letter, of a strong letter of recommendation. Um, following up with those contacts, very important. Um, and then depending on your timeline, ideally you want to take the MCAT in January or March of the year in which you're applying. Take it when you're ready, but ideally you want to take it early so that you have an opportunity to evaluate if you need a retake, what the, the game plan will be in that case. So if you if you take it in March, you're getting your score back in April, uh, about a month later, way before the application opens. So you can strategize accordingly. Um, for uh, PA school, same thing, PA CAT or GRE, um, in terms of when to take that, um, I'm actually not 100% sure. Is it you take it in 
the fall semester, I guess, before applications start. Um, yeah, I would do similar timeline. timeline. I mean, the GRE is offered so often that if yeah. you take yeah. it winter or spring of the year you're applying where the applications open in April, you should be in fine okay. shape. Yeah. I used to tell my students, just get it out of the way. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's a frequent, it's, it's offered frequently enough that you can take it a little later too. This is a great time to start creating your school list. So um, the, the person here to the participant who mentioned, when should you start creating your school list? Yeah. If you kind of have an idea of where you want to go, it's never too early to kind of take a look. But now is when you're really going to sit down and start researching those schools and figure out what do you like about them? What do they have to offer and start creating that school list? So that so that by the time your application cycle opens in May or April for PA schools, you have a pretty good list. It doesn't have to be the final list, um, but you have an idea of where you want to go to school. Okay. So there's uh, a couple questions about LORs that I think we can answer now. Okay. Uh, so Aang asked, uh, our school no longer offers committee letters. Does mm -hmm. that put us at a disadvantage? No. no. And I think we're going to see more and more and more schools yeah. uh, stop doing committee letters because uh, I, I I hate committee letters. They, they take away from advising um, and Thank just you. put so much pressure on just mm -hmm. writing letters. So yeah. you'll be okay. And then uh, FICA, I think, um, for LORs, is it too early if I already have the LORs ready and sent to my school to create a committee letter? Does the time hmm. matter? So I'm going to leave that one up to your committee to answer since you have a committee process, if if they're okay with it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, check with them. Yeah, it I, does. It definitely varies school to school. What I've seen is that most schools have pretty firm committee letter processes. And sometimes it is early, you know, sometimes they want to see a rough draft of a personal statement in January. Um, uh, but often they, because like Ryan was saying, it takes up so much advisor time. If you go to your own school's, you know, website or the pre-health office, get on their listserv, whatever, find out that flow. Often it's, you know, you can't be too early or late. Like there's a window and that's the window they have available to do the work. So you need to work with them to to get in the flow that helps you get the letter from them. Yep, yep. The the general rule of thumb that we talk about is, is letters ideally are dated the year that you are applying. Now, obviously again, committee letter process, a little bit different. Um, and, and our software platform helps you collect those letters doesn't specifically work for our pre-PA friends at this point. Uh, CASPA has some some weirdness around using third-party application tools or, or letter of recommendation tools. We're hopefully going to be working on that in the future. Um, it works for Comus, which uh, CASPA is the same technology platform called Liaison. Uh, so yeah, we'll see. Okay. All right. So, Brian, in big, bold, 50-point font, begin applications <laughs> early. Why? 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 Uh, it's not important. Uh, rolling admissions, my <laughs> friends. Uh, most med schools um, work on rolling admissions, uh, PA schools as well, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and so the, the whole game is get your application in early so that you're reviewed, you get an interview invite, you get your interview done, you're reviewed for potential acceptance. Uh, when a time in, in the process where the number of seats is still relatively high. So um, the I, I have a sketch sometimes that I use that, I, that I've drawn out that basically shows that the number of applications is going up and up and up and up and the number of seats is going down and down and down and down because just that's the application process and ideally you're turning your application in when there is more abundance of of interview spots and seats at schools yep yeah so big call out here for those of you if you're early in your pre-health process so you just recently did college admissions take note of how different this is. The cycle does not run fall to fall. The cycle runs spring to spring. And the deadlines, like Ryan said, aren't what matter. So 
uh, if you're, you know, we were talking about, it doesn't have to be a four-year plan. It could be a five-year plan. It could be an eight-year plan, but you are applying um, for schools that start in the fall because some PA schools will start in January or May, but for a school that's starting in like July, August, September, you're applying in April or May or June, a full year before that. It's a very long cycle. Oops. Yes. Itchy and, trigger finger. And just for, for language purposes, we put secondaries, the, the PA world calls them supplementals, but yes. same, same, same. Yeah, yeah. And there's a question in the chat. How can you pre-write secondaries when you don't have the prompt? Ha-ha! Well, <laughs> actually. <laughs> Contraire, mon frere. <laughs> we have the prompts, and so do you. I just put it up, too. Oh, there. So. <laughs> you and I both are like, Boo. Yeah. So yes. for pre-med. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, this is the, yeah, for pre-med, we, um, I think, uh, we're working on a similar repository for PA again. That's, mm -hmm. um, it's something where we're trying to expand to more and more pre-health assistance. Um, but for, for med currently we have secondaryapps.com. The good news is most med schools keep the same secondaries year to year. Now it's not a guarantee, but it is very common that they stay the same. And also we've just been through a process a few years ago where many schools changed. So there's been a lot um, for, for people who are a uh, global majority, this is not news, but for people who are majority US minority in the world, some of us are just figuring out how many rights we had that we didn't realize were privileges. Um, and so there are a lot more essays that have been added about that, about awareness of your world, about giving back to less fortunate, about the way you contribute to diversity that doesn't have to mean melanin or gender just in the way you what do you bring to your educational class what can you do for your student cohort but so a lot of those changes have happened in prior years um there's also been some additions of covid although that's i think that'll probably still be around for a few years and it'll start to dial off but mostly we see schools use similar essays year after year so you can go to that link we just put whether or not you work with us right we do secondary essay review but even if you're just doing the prep on your own if that's what's right for your budget or your learning style you can go use that repository, pre-write essays based off of last year's prompts, and you will always keep it updated for the past year. And then um, just reality check when you get the official prompt that it's the same. And, um, you know, I always like to do a little math here. It's common to apply to 20 or 25 schools. It's common to have about five essays per school. I mean, it could be zero or one. It could be 14, but five is common. So we're talking about maybe 100 or 125 essays. And a lot of schools say you get two weeks to turn them around. I don't want you to write 125 essays in the first two weeks of July. I want you to space it out. And so just kind of do the math on the risk calculus. Let's say you don't even pre-write them all. You pre-write 50 and then maybe 10% of them change. So five, you're still gonna be real happy that you pre-wrote 45 essays. Mm -hmm. Definitely. All right, year four. Get into school. Uh, yay. <laughs> Interview you know, we, first, then get in. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. I realized we did a similar presentation for parents the other night. And the big bullet point that's not here is twiddling your thumbs <laughs> and biting your nails. <laughs> yeah. And celebrate. <laughs> and celebrating. <laughs> yes. So we just talked about how application mostly is happening spring and summer. So if we're talking about the school year, you know, if you're in your, if you apply in spring of your junior year or spring or summer between junior and senior, then what's happening fall of senior year, if things go well, is interviews. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but interviews, particularly for the med side, can go all the way up through March. So it could be fall, but it could be winter and it could be spring. Um, so you're waiting mm -hmm. and you're hoping. And then hopefully you're celebrating. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Yeah, that's a big part of it. Uh, yeah, and then planned finances, uh, just so that doesn't sound too scary. Your med school is going to be an enormous resource to you in this. So once you start to get acceptances, they will reach out to you about what they can offer you in terms of loans. I think the big thing to understand is that you should, most of us, everyone's going to have a different experience. Most of us should expect to be taking out significant loans. Um, merit scholarships are extremely 
rare for med school. They do happen. They don't happen a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, And so what you're really just looking at is, um, you know, what's my, what, what's my debt plan going to be? And then, you know, late, later on you figure out your repayment plan, but kind of understanding things like um, federal loans tend to have better rates than private loans, you know, so you'll, you'll get, but the school will walk you through that as well. So luckily you're not doing that in a vacuum. You're, you're going to be able to take advantage of your um, med school's financial office to help you make those decisions. Hmm. Yes. Scary, scary part of this process. Oh. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so uh, now comes kind of the interactive portion of today. Um, We just talked a lot about timeline and Ryan kind of a few times mentioned, oh yeah, we have a tool, we have a tool. So Ryan, I have some slides that walk us through this. Um, Do you wanna do that or do you wanna take over screen share and do a quick demo with a live account? Uh, Let's do the slides. Okay. And then we can we can demo. Right, let's demo. Okay. Let's demo. I take. I, I'm gathering you're going to be the demoer. Yeah. Right? I tend Let to me. be the slide person. You tend to be the demo person. So I'll let you take over screen share. Bear with us, friends. Instead of giving you pictures of Mapped, we're going to log into Mapped and have you look at it with us. Um, and if any of you have Mapped accounts, mm-hmm. feel free to log in and look at yours while we're talking, so that you could be clicking around. Um, if you don't, you can create one for free right now at mapped.com. Uh, some people think it's MAPD. It's just M-A-P-P-D. And just say it like the word mapped as though an E is there, even though it's not. It is your roadmap to PA school, med school, wherever you are going in this fun, fun world. So this is our demo account that has... Um, been played with and data has been put in. Uh, we're working on making the platform much more user friendly at the very beginning because as of right now, there's a lot of work that has to go into getting to a point where there's uh, a lot of value that you can get out of this, of seeing some trends and seeing your activities and any gaps that may be there, seeing school prereqs. Uh, we know that on the pre PA side, there are um, uh, a lot of defined requirements and minimums for PA schools. And so we're building all of that into mapped, which will be free. I know there are other services out there that are paid that'll kind of give you some school lists that you may be eligible to applying to. We're going to build that right into maps free level for, uh, all of you pre PA students. So more to come there. But right off, right off the bat on the dashboard, you can see that this is our pre-med friend. Um, just to show all of our pre-PA friends, if if this were a pre-PA student, or if you woke up one morning and go, you know what, I'm going to be a PA. I don't, I don't want to be a doctor anymore. Um, we have the ability to, to change that in your uh, profile. And you can see that some of the platform has changed. So now instead of MCAT, it says pre-PA tests because there are a few different tests uh, that may be available, including the MCAT, because some PA students have taken the MCAT before, and you can report that to CASPA if you want. Uh, But you can see here that CASPA GPA is now calculated um, and all kinds of fun stuff that we're we're building out there. So let me switch back to pre-med. For right now, um, at the at the end of the day, think of this as just your portfolio, your tracker of everything that you're doing, but it also gives you feedback along the way. So if we go into our courses tab, where again, this demo account has, has done a lot of work putting in courses, uh, talking about the different schools they've gone to, um, right now the prereqs are self-selected. So you are entering what prereq you think they're good for. Uh, you can see that there's this this biochemistry here is flagged, and that means, uh oh, uh, it's a prereq, and this person put it a C minus, which on the med side of things, med schools don't consider C minus passing for prereqs, and a lot of sc- students don't know that, and they, so they just go about their their mm-hmm. merry way, and then they get to applications, and then someone finally says something, or maybe nobody ever says anything. And and they they make the a fatal mistake of applying 
without retaking that course. So some some fun things that we can do there. We have, I think, close to 5 million data points of different courses and stuff for, for 2,000 plus schools across the country and, and internationally as well. Uh, continuing to grow. Same thing for activities. You can come in here, track everything that you're doing, enter your hours. Uh, we are going through a huge redesign um, that in a month or two, everything will look different. It'll work a lot better. It'll be a lot more streamlined. Um, but we just come in here, you add a new activity. You can kind of classify it similar to how AMCAS classifies things, uh, names stuff. And then once you have your activity, um, you can then track your hours. And we originally thought of this as a way to journal because we've talked to so many students who are two or three years out from doing some things and are like, well, I don't remember what I did and I don't remember why it was important to me. And so really being able to come in here and go, hey, you know what? Uh, over the course of this week, I'll just put in a week here. Um, I did five hours at this place and then I can just talk about the importance of it. I can upload a PDF or some images to help me remember in a year or two uh, why that was important to me so that when I go to work on my applications, um, the the big mission that we're on is to help students understand both pre-med and pre-PA that it's not just what you did and how many hours you did it, but it's it's why was it important and how did you impact this position and, and how did it impact you as a person on this journey? And so really being able to track all of this in one place is a, a big mission that we're on. So uh, again, I, I mentioned tracking MCAT uh, uh, or PACAT, GRE, that kind of stuff. We have, a, again, a big redesign coming for our roadmap. Right now, this is built off of this demo student's profile saying, hey, I'm planning on starting med school in 2026. Here are the things uh, in this kind of vertical layout that you should be working on. And a lot of this stuff you can see over the course of four years you should be shadowing, right? That's our way of telling you it shadowing is not a one and done. It is a consistent, methodical, try to continually get some shadowing as often as possible uh, throughout the whole process. And then you can see MCAT, letters of rec, doing some school research, working on those applications. So again, the, the med school start year was 2026. You're applying a year before. And so a lot of students don't really understand that. So hopefully this custom roadmap, again, going through a big redesign uh, in the next few months, but has all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, you can share this tool with your school advisors for free. Um, so you, you can uh, share it with them. They can take a peek at everything that you have entered so that when you have conversations with your school advisor, you can go, yeah, just pull up my maps account and you don't have to sit there for, for half of your session just going over everything you, you've already been doing. Um, so it's a great tool to make those conversations with your school advisor much more efficient. If you don't have an advisor, uh, our Mapped Pro, everything I've showed you so far is free. Uh, Mapped Pro allows you to chat with one of our advisors. If you don't have one or you want some extra information, you can chat with us directly inside of the Mapped platform. And it's only $90 a year, uh, which we we think is very affordable for most people. Um, keeping track of contacts, right? Just general kind of list who's who potentially is going to write you a letter of recommendation. Start looking at applications. We have an application tracker here, or if you want some specific information about AMCAS or COMAS, TMDSAS. Again, same thing for CASPA. We have information pulled in from CASPA as well. You can start to build out your med school list. Um, you can take notes on why you're potentially applying to these schools. You can um, click the wrong button. Uh, you can go through and filter by different states that you may be interested in. Go, hey, I want to go here. Um, and it gets added to your list. And again, you can kind of do some research. We have all the prereqs pulled in to, and compare that to your course list. So you can see here that this student meets all the prereqs for um, Midwestern here in Arizona. Uh, so all the social media tags and all kinds of fun stuff here. 
Uh, and then my LORs, I, I mentioned we have a tool for letters of recommendations. Again, not uh, applicable to our pre-PA friends, uh, but for our med school friends who are not applying to TMDSAS, TMDSAS has some um, some stuff that is, is going to cause some barriers for us, including um, the next application cycle. Uh, we do work with AMCAS and ACOMIS to send letters. So you can start collecting letters kind of whenever we recommend, again, the year that you're applying. Um, if you are going straight to the application service, you have to wait until the applications open up in May to send directly to them. So it's an easier way to be less stressed. We actually had uh, someone in our, our live stream yesterday going, I applied and I still have a letter writer that hasn't submitted oh, no. my letter. Uh, and we're like, no. So hopefully... Um, you can avoid that pain. Uh, but that's a quick overview, right? It's it's kind of a all-in-one tracker portfolio feedback machine. Um, the more information and data that we get, the more that we can continually help students understand this process a lot better. So lots of fun stuff coming uh, to MAPT uh, in the future. Again, big redesign and a lot more stuff for our pre-PA friends. Yep. Yeah, we're always adding to it. Um, this list is so long. I think when we wrote this slide, we got so excited about all the features that we maybe forgot about legibility. But yeah, Matt Pro does a million things. And uh, it's I was just double checking Netflix prices yesterday. So it's cheaper than the basic plan on Netflix, mm -hmm. right? It's not as cheap as the plan with ads. But if you just get the basic plan, which is $9.99 a month, Matt just cheaper than that. So I feel like it's really great value to have all those tools, plus the fact that you can message and have an expert like Brunia answer questions. It's amazing. Um, so we're just about done with the presentation portion. We're going to have plenty of time for Q&A about timeline and any thoughts about the pre-health process. We do always like to remind folks about some of the resources we have outside of this workshop series. Um, so I want to walk us through a couple of those briefly. So one is, you may know, uh, Dr. Ryan Gray, he likes to write books. Um, so we have this pre-med playbook guide series, um, guide to the personal statement, guide to the med school interview, guide to the medical school application process. You can, uh, you can Google them, you can search them on Amazon. And if you are watching on a big screen and you have your phone handy, you can ping that QR code right there and it will take you right to the link. Or you take um, a screenshot and go into your photo app and... The QR code oh, yeah. works in the photo app. Let's forget that. Yes, yes. Also that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, books are great resource. Um, not free, obviously, but very low cost. It's like eight bucks on Kindle. It's a good. Check deal. your library too. And get it. For oh yeah. Free. A lot yeah. of libraries carry them. Yeah. Free at your local library. And also, many advisors have copies. So sometimes oh, yeah. there's a copy mm -hmm. in your school office that you can go. You maybe can't check out, but you can use while you're sitting in the office. Is often what they'll do. Yeah, we send um, them. Uh, for free to school advisors. So if your advisor doesn't have them, uh, ask them to reach out to us and we will send them for free to you. Yeah, advisor. we'll gladly do it. Absolutely. All right. Um, and uh, similarly, although uh, Savannah is not with us today, our, our good friend Savannah Perry, uh, who is the head of the PA platform, she also has some amazing books. You can see some kind of similar stuff here. There's a guide to the personal statement. There's a guide to the interview. And then this workbook is, is you know, kind of her equivalent of the guide to the application process. Um, and it's it's really brilliant because it's something Ryan and I have talked about doing and haven't made happen, but Savannah already did. So instead of just here's how it works, there's also some interactive sheets you can fill out so that you're actually like, you know, before Maps came along and made it all electronic, she had the book where you could at least jot notes right in the book. So super cool tool to have. Um, and, and again, plot twist. It looks like Savannah is with us. What? <laughs> she's, she's hanging Hello? out in the chat. Oh, hey, Savannah. Hi, Savannah. Hi, Savannah. Are, are, are you here as a participant or do you want to be uh, a presenter with us? <laughs> she's just hanging out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. She can in the come car. She wants. <laughs> she's in the car. Yeah, in no car. pressure. Okay. Hanging so, yeah. <laughs> but so, Savannah, very good friend of ours. We admire her a lot has some amazing books, highly recommend. Um, and then Ryan, you already mentioned MappedCon again, but tell, tell the friends one more time why this yeah. is so great. MappedCon, oh, that uh, font didn't work very well. Um, yeah. MappedCon, 
Maps.com. Uh, MapsCon, we've done virtually a version of the last several years. This year, October 6th through 8th, we are in person. Um, we have room for a thousand students. We have 50 plus exhibitors, including PA schools, med schools, uh, test prep companies, companies that help you find uh, clinical experiences, SMP programs, post back programs, all kinds of amazing people to help you on your pre-med or pre-PA journey. Uh, yeah, come come get a ticket. Come hang out with us. The whole team will be there. Savannah actually will be there as well. Um, so you can uh, come hang out with us. You can come learn, come network uh, with people who want to see you. Emily says, so excited for MAPTCON. Woohoo! Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be great. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I know we've got some parents as well, students on today's call. Students and parents, welcome. In fact, we even have, if, if any of you have, um, if any of you are uh, pre-college or if you have friends or family who are pre-college, um, there is also on Sunday some dedicated stuff just for high school students. So uh, it come on, come all. Mm. All right. So yeah, open Q&A coming up in a minute. A couple other things we wanted to share. So again, you may know if you've come to our workshops before, one of the big missions here is to provide as much free information as we can. Um, so of course we do have paid services. We don't make a secret of that. A lot of students we find want one-on-one -on -one advising outside of what they get at their school. And we're very happy to be that supplement or to be advisors for students who don't have access to advisors. But um, our YouTube channel has all kinds of amazing stuff. We have a live office hours for pre-med once a week. Um, we have a pre-med hangout. I think the next slide is PA stuff. No, yes, it is. Okay. And then similarly, PA platform, there's a pre-PA club Facebook group, thousands of, uh, hundreds of videos, thousands of hours on the PA platform YouTube channel. So uh, lots and lots of great stuff. You know, it maybe isn't quite as tailored, but so much of the information we give is general information that you have to apply to yourself anyway. So it's definitely, we definitely recommend that everyone take advantage of all the free stuff we're putting out there. I feel like we've been talking about a lot of stuff. Uh, do we yeah. Like Pre-med years? Yeah, they're fun tools. Pre-med yeah. years is the podcast I do. Uh, we have over 500 episodes, 530 something, 40 something, mm. something like that. Um, been doing it for almost 12 years now, which is, no, 11 years, which is fantastic. Um, tons of great interviews, uh, advice, all that kind of fun stuff. So go check it out. And the MCAT podcast I do with Blueprint MCATs. It's free pre-med advising. Why would you not? And that's our good friend, Savannah Perry. She also has a podcast. She just hit 250 episodes, I think, mm. this week. Um, so you can check out her podcast as well if you are a pre-PA student. Who wants to talk about that? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I can take it. <laughs> so just to kind of leave you uh, with some words of wisdom when you're thinking about, you know, this is a it's a long process, but but at the end of the day, how you approach it is is unique to yourself. Right. So the idea is how how am I going to get into medical school or PA school? How can I get into it? Remember, you are unique in your own way. You have to know what your motivations are for wanting to do this. So a lot of figuring out in your first couple of years of this process a lot of what goes on is figuring out that why and you pursue activities that will help you figure out that why um and remember that only you can tell your story only you can tell a medical school or a pa school how, how you came to this decision why you want to continue on this path um, and we encourage you to explore that and use all the resources that we offer um, connect on campus with, you know, the the activities that you feel passionate about, because that's what's going to help you tell your story. Great. Uh, so, yeah, I mentioned before, we do have um, pre-med one-on-one -on -one advising, if you're interested in that. It's for at any time in the journey. So a lot of people think of pre-med advising as application advising, and we absolutely do that. But we also have single sessions if you just want to sit down and have 30 or 60 minutes with an advisor to sort of check in on how where you are in your journey we do that 
And we also have plans that are specifically for the pre-med pathway. So sort of walking you through freshman, sophomore, junior year, or if you're non-traditional, like what's happening the two or three years before you apply. So uh, lots of stuff you can check out at medicalschoolhq.net or at this scan me. Uh, I think I just covered that slide. Same stuff. Uh, Which should have been hidden. Yeah. Yeah, I think a few of these got <laughs> maybe should have been <laughs> hidden and weren't. Yeah. Uh, all right. So as before we jump into QA, you guys can start to raise your hands. You can type in the chat too, but we love it if you raise your hands just so we can actually hear you ask the question. Um, so we covered pre-health in general, talked a lot about med and pre-PA. So we wanted to list a couple different resources. So map.com works for both pre-med and pre-PA pre students. Again, what Ryan showed you, 99% of that was free. There are just a few things that are at the pro level. Um, if you want to store letters of rec or chat with us directly, um, medicalschoolhq.net for all of your pre-med help. And we strongly recommend the pre-PA platform, uh, the PA platform, sorry, dot com for all of your pre-PA needs. And lightning bolts and stars are happening. And that's how excited we are about you getting in touch with us. <laughs> hmm. Q and A, yay! Uh, so we can do Q and A a couple ways. Uh, if you are in a situation where you can come on audio only uh, and ask your question, you can raise your hand. If uh, that doesn't work, you can also just ask in the chat, and we'll pull questions from there. Yeah. We're pretty good. I guess we answered everyone's questions. It's the best way to do it. You have an opportunity to pick pick our brains. Any questions at all? Jessica. Jessica. Hello, Jessica. You can unmute. Hello, can you hear me, Dr. Gray? Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. I um, just had a quick question uh, about the slide about the for pre-med science prerequisites. The order that it was listed, is that what you would recommend for like the order to start taking the courses? Not necessarily. Um, the one thing that you'll want to consider, Jessica, is that sciences sometimes have certain required flows. So, for example, you know, you have to check with your school, but most schools are going to expect you to complete general chemistry one and two before you take organic chemistry one. And then a lot of schools will say organic one and two before you take biochem. But for example, the, like going on the same path of chem, some schools will allow you to take biochemistry as long as you've completed orgo one. And then, you know, we put a lot of the humanities at the bottom in that particular science slide or that's that pre-med slide, but it doesn't mean that they need to be later. In fact, I think it's a really good idea to spread out your reading and writing courses. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm not commenting on you, you're one person, but I'm just saying generally, I find a lot of pre-meds spend a, much time developing their science and math skills to the detriment of their critical reading skills and critical reading is going to matter hugely on the MCAT because the MCAT is 60% reading and problem solving and only 40% knowledge. It's also just gonna matter in your career, right? You're gonna to need to read a lot to get through med school. You're gonna to need to be a great reader to um, read patient charts quickly and digest that information. You're gonna to need to be a reader to do your continuing education as a physician. Um, so um, I think it's nice to space those out throughout your college years because you wanna think of that as not a course where I need to get an A, but those are my chances to really develop my reading and writing and critical problem solving skills. And so like any skill, if you're going to do better by spaced repetition over time than a cram. Thank you so much, Rachel. That was really helpful. I really appreciate it. Yay. That was a good question. All right. Uh, Musa asked in the chat how to prepare for the upcoming MCAT test. Uh, in 2024, Rachel, you want to tackle that one? Former M or still MCAT expert, but used uh, to work at uh, an MCAT, cut several different MCAT companies. I did, yeah. I was at the Prince Review for a long time, 
And then I was at Blueprint back when Blueprint was Next Step. And then I stayed with Next Step to Blueprint. So yeah, there's no one right way to prep Musa. I love this question. Um, so how to prepare is it's going to be, you're going to prepare the best way for you, but some common things to consider. One is most people underestimate how long they need. A classic pre-med error is to allow two months when you need three or four. Now is three or four the magic ticket? Not necessarily. I've known a few wacky weird souls who prepped in six weeks and did great. Good for them. They're not common, but it does happen. I've also known people who needed six or eight months. It sort of depends on how fast you learn, how well you retain, how busy you are. Um, I, I don't think it's fair. I'm not defending it, but I am saying one reality of the MCAT is it rewards people who have a lot of resources in their life to support them. So if you can organize your life that the three or four months before the MCAT, there's slightly fewer obligations, right? So, you know, if it's your job to take care of little siblings, can someone else pitch in with that more? If you work a 30 hour a week job, could you afford to cut your hours by five hours a week? Maybe yes, maybe no, I, I don't know. But you have to think about that stuff because the MCAT prep is like a job. Most people need three or 400 hours. So, you know, you don't wanna do two hours a week for 200 weeks. That's like, you won't remember, right? It, it, it's not a cram, but you do kind of need a run up at the exam, you know? But so you need to decide, am I someone who can do this part-time for five or six months? Can I do it closer to like full-time for three months? Um, and then whatever your prep is, once you figured out kind of that timeline, it needs to be a good mix of practice and content. And I just sort of touched on this with my humanities question before. The exam is very, very reading heavy. And if you only review content and say, I'm just going to do all my content first, and then I'll take a diagnostic because I don't want to take a test yet because I'm not ready to take a test because I haven't done my content. You're not approaching it the right way. You should be doing practice questions and content review from the very beginning. You don't need to burn all your full length practice tests right away, but you want to get a lot of practice material that's both full length tests and practice questions, practice passages, practice sections. Because um, critical reading and problem solving is where the big points come from. If you knew your books forward and backward, you'd still cap out somewhere around a 500, which is average. If you're looking to push into 508, 510 higher, you're gonna need to be a killer reader. Good luck. Yes, yes, good luck. Um... Uh, Lena says, if I'm still in high school as a senior, what would be your advice as I start college next year? Great question. I, I love this. And I think it's the same answer for both our pre-med and pre-PA friends. Uh, Vernia, what's your advice for newly minted college students? Um, make sure that the college that you're looking into um, or that, you know, that you're considering is the right fit for you. At the end yeah. of the day, we want you to be happy there. You're going to thrive in a school where, where you fit. Same thing with medical school or PA school. So picking the right school for you is so, so important. And then also keeping an open mind to what major you want to pursue. You don't have to pursue a science major. You can pursue any major that you want and just take those prereqs that we were talking about before. So keeping an open mind, don't you know, don't start college thinking, I'm going to be pre-med, I have to major in the science. That's not necessarily true. So use that that time to to explore those other interests. That's my advice. Yes. Uh, Fika asks, how long do you think content review phase should be? Uh, I wonder if you started typing that before I finished answering <laughs> my last question, Fika, because you may have processed since writing that, that <laughs> I don't think you should have a content review only phase. Now it's it's common. There were a lot of test prep companies for a long time that kind of went about that. And that's something that I think Blueprint has been really instrumental in revolutionizing. Um, so 60% of the exam is critical reasoning and critical analysis and scientific inquiry. So um, I would start doing at least practice questions from the very beginning. Um, so I don't think you should have a dedicated content review all by itself. That said, it is common to take one full length or half length diagnostic at the beginning of your prep and then not actually graduating to full length tests until about halfway through your prep. So there's a period there where you're doing practice, but you aren't necessarily using your practice exams 
so, you know, if you're doing a four month plan, again, everyone's going to be a little different, but it's very normal to do a diagnostic, a whole bunch of practice passages and, and practice questions with your content review, and then start to do full length exams more in the back half. And by the end, you are probably doing almost exclusively exams and exam review. Yep, yep. Awesome. Any other questions? Raise your hand if you want to come on and ask uh, or type them up. I'll give it a second before we say goodbye. The saddest part of the session is the goodbye. <laughs> Going once, going yeah. twice. Love Sold. Thank you all for coming, hanging out with us, learning about mapped and activities and all of that kind of good stuff. Um, MappedCon.com. If you want to come join us in Baltimore, we would love to have you. Again, uh, just announced that we'll have a uh, at least one osteopathic physician there doing some OMM. Uh, demonstrations so you can learn about that. We have a CPR workshop, a suturing workshop. Uh, we have the army there with a tent with uh, some sim dummies. We have uh, just so much fun crammed into about two full days. It's Friday night, uh, all day Saturday, and then Sunday to the early afternoon. So come, come hang out with us. There's a couple other questions, Rachel, if you want to tackle those that came in. Sure. Uh, let's see. So any suggestions for study skills for cars? Uh, yeah. Uh, wherever you are in your life, whether you're in high school or your junior year of college, start reading more. Read something that isn't your science textbooks. Um, any reading is going to help. Uh, the ideal is to read rigorous nonfiction, right? Like a philosophy textbook or long sprawling articles from, you know, the Atlantic or New Yorker or whatever you prefer to read. But even if what you love to read is young adult fiction, I mean, I read so much of that in my youth, right? Like I did read some really hard stuff and I also read a whole lot of, you know, Twilight-esque things before Twilight because I'm older, right? It doesn't matter. Just read more, honestly. And I know that sounds so basic, but yes, critical reading is a skill you can build. But if think about a little bit, like if you were going to go to the gym and try to pack on 20 pounds of muscle you probably wouldn't say, I'm just going to go to the gym and spend eight hours there a day for three months, right? It would be a long, such a slow, steady plan. Reading is similar. You can improve your reading skills in the few months that you're doing MCAT prep, but um, it's something that you want to, if you can, if you have the time, start sooner. Um, and then, yeah, just lots and lots of practice and lots of analysis. We have the, um, uh, I think it's on hiatus currently, but there's an, a big archive of the MCAT Cars podcast that we used to do. Um, Ryan and Jack Weston used to do, so you can check some of those out. We still have the MCAT podcast that goes through all of the tests, uh, all four sections. I definitely think listening to that is really helpful because so much, um, it's not just the cars, all four sections are very reading heavy. Um, and so much of what you need to do is learn to think like the test. It's not super tricky like the SAT, but you do need to understand what the passages are getting at and what kinds of questions. And, and honestly, like even if you're not sitting down doing practice passages, if you're just listening to the MCAT podcast while you're on a run, it's going to help. It's going to make a difference because it's going to help you just reframe your mind to the way uh, the test is asking you to think. Yep, yep. <sighs> oh, there was one more too. Any suggestions on when to start personal statement, how to go about starting it? Well, I don't have to answer that one. Anyone can. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so there's something called the pre-med playbook guide to the medical school personal statement. Oh, wait, I think the camera's on Verenia. Let me just make sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there we go. There you go. You know, <laughs> that old thing. I'm fant- doing my best Vanna White. <laughs> it's it's honestly a fantastic resource uh, in terms of when to start. Um, you, you know, start obviously leading up to your application. So maybe January or February early on, you're going to you're going to end up going through several drafts before you land on one that you feel is very strong. 
um, our approach to the personal statement is that it should answer the question, why medicine? Why do you want to be a doctor? Um, and so hopefully you've explored the field and you've had experiences that you can then reflect on in your personal statement to show why you want to be a physician. Show them. Show them. Don't just tell them. Don't just give them your resume and everything you've done. Um, really show them. What are the things that you've experienced that helped you understand this is why why physician, assistant, or physician. Uh, but yeah, check out Dr. Gray's book. Great, great resource. Yep, yep. I think that takes us to the end of the list. All right, friends. Thank you for coming, hanging out. Again, mapscon.com, medicalschoolhq.net, mapped.com for our software platform that we demoed for you, and the PA platform.com for all of you fun pre PA students out there. You have a wonderful day. Thanks for hanging out with us. Bye. Bye bye.